Secretary of State Antony Blinken is holding key immigration meetings today amid the record number of migrants at the southern border and as the Biden administration weighs cracking down on asylum seekers. CBS News immigration reporter Camilo Montoyo Galvez is following the latest for us from the border city of Eagle Pass, Texas. Uh, thanks for being with us. I want to start with asking what we should expect to hear from this meeting today. Good morning, Chanel. The Biden administration is again turning to Mexico and Guatemala, for that matter, for help in addressing the incredibly vexing challenges here at the U.S.-Mexico border. The U.S. under Republican and Democratic administrations has increasingly relied on other countries in the Western Hemisphere to address the root causes of migration and to slow the pace of illegal crossings here at the U.S. southern border. The Biden administration is likely to ask Guatemala and Mexico for additional help in stopping U.S.-bound migrants before they reach American soil. Chanel, they're also likely to ask these countries to accept additional deportations from the U.S., including of Venezuelan migrants who right now cannot be deported to Venezuela because the government there is not accepting U.S. deportations. In December, as you know, Chanel, U.S. officials here process a record 300,000 migrants. That number dropped by 50 percent in January, and that drop was partially attributed to increased Mexican enforcement on the other side of the border. But U.S. officials are bracing for those numbers to increase in the spring, as is historically the case. And this is why they're asking for additional help from Mexico and Guatemala. OK, makes sense. We also know, Camilo, both President Biden and former President Donald Trump are set to visit the southern border in separate events tomorrow. How will this go down? Well, Chanel, it is clear that immigration will be a defining issue in this election for both President Biden and former President Donald Trump. President Biden is headed to Brownsville, Texas, in the Rio Grande Valley on Thursday to stage his second visit to the U.S.-Mexico border during his time as president. He will likely use that opportunity, Chanel, to underscore that he reached a deal with lawmakers in Congress, a bipartisan agreement to make some pretty tough and drastic changes to the U.S. immigration system, but that Republicans rejected that agreement because of political reasons. He will likely underscore that point. Former President Donald Trump is coming here to Eagle Pass also on Thursday say to hold a dueling event, he will likely also blame the Biden administration and President Biden for the crisis here along the border and will also likely highlight crimes that have been allegedly committed by undocumented immigrants across the country. The Trump campaign channel, as you know, certainly feels that this is a winning political issue for them. And the polls do indicate that Americans are very concerned about immigration and that they view President Biden's handling of it in unfavorable terms. And Camilo, the other part of this story really is what happens after migrants cross the border. As you know, we've been hearing from local leaders, uh, including New York City's Mayor Eric Adams, really about their frustration around what's happening when those migrants arrive in their cities, uh, especially when it comes to those sanctuary policies. I'm wondering how the government is responding. Well, look, Chanel. Anytime you have a large group like the what we've seen coming to the border over the past three years, some of those people are going to commit crimes. Roughly three million migrants have been released from U.S. border custody here over the past three years. They are vetted for security concerns while in Border Patrol custody, but it is very difficult for the government to control their movements and their actions once they're out of U.S. custody. But it is also very important to note that the data that is available does not indicate that migrants who are here illegally commit crimes at a higher rate and level than native-born Americans and U.S. citizens. On the contrary, the data that is available suggests that undocumented immigrants for many reasons commit crimes at a lower rate than native-born Americans. So that is an important note to highlight, but it is clear why some people are having such visceral reactions to these very serious crimes. But it was just important for me, I think, to just set the record straight mm -hmm. on that issue. Yeah, that's a really important piece of data. Thanks so much, Camilla. We appreciate this.